I would watch the documentaries. And so seeing your movements, everything like it, it matched. And I was just curious, you know, you also your voice, like who did, how did you prepare? Who did you speak to? What did you do? Um, it's interesting. Cause I actually like that's, Thank you. Um, but that's also the part that I feel the most insecure about is because I, I think I did try really hard to do that kind of, yeah, matchy matchy sound like her, move like her. And, and, it, and it was, I think it paid off in some moments. I think in other moments I could have tried a little harder, but it's, it's hard, man. And ultimately I think, you know, as, as time went by and as, you know, at a certain point you start to see less of Martha in the documentary and then there's kind of the eight years that you don't see her at all while Michael's in prison or you know see her only in tidbits um in that time that's kind of the part that was the most challenging because you had I had to like plot what happens to a person to get them from here to here because by the time we see her next she's like for all intents and purposes like this self-actualized woman and she's a full person and you can see how much um progress she's made in her life and in her understanding of herself and uh yeah I think I mean in terms of preparation I just think there's so much information out there about her and her sister and just kind of figuring that out internalizing that getting to know it as much as I possibly could and then just leave the rest up to imagination it's like it's not that hard to imagine what you know what being orphaned as a toddler would do for your sense of self and belonging and you know yeah just kind of giving a little giving that those parts of her a little room to breathe um I don't think that they were given too much time in the in the other tellings of the story well and then you see she's kind of I mean aside from Caitlin she's one of the first siblings to really express doubt and I was just curious how you know how you felt about that at least acting it out because it does feel like it's uh it's going against her nature to even doubt Michael yeah I think that you know, aside from the doubt of it all, I think that ultimately what she's kind of begging for when she expresses that doubt is just for like someone to see and acknowledge like how absurd the whole thing is. Mm -hmm. um, how absurd it is that they even need to have conversations about whether or not their father killed their mother. Because uh, I think that everybody's so afraid to kind of let themselves feel the absurdity of it all because once you do it's like Pandora's box and you like can't put it away again um and that's really alienating and isolating and it feels like you're constantly on a precipice and I think that that's what Martha is feeling the whole time is that like if we can't talk about how this all affects us then we're not people like we're we're not being humans. Like, of course, this is affecting us. Of course, we should have doubts because like, this is weird. It's all so weird. And if we can't admit that it's weird, then we're kidding ourselves. And so she's kind of just begging someone to, to help her not feel so crazy. Um, and I think that she's actually, she may actually be so confident in her belief of her father that it allows her to doubt him I think that it allows her to actually think about the real the realities of it because she knows in her heart that she, that he is innocent of this crime that's interesting that you say that because then you see you know Margaret like she's doing the research for the poker but it doesn't seem like she's even stopping to think about what's actually happened she's thinking like what can I do to personally alleviate myself of this guilt? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was, I, I think that's really interesting. I also wanted to ask, like, what do you hope people take away from this, especially from your character who her mental health is discussed more than any of the other characters, in my opinion? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that like, 
it's so easy to dissociate from the true crime genre uh, and to treat it as characters in a story, to treat it as um, fiction. And I think that the documentary that was made, you know, the, the, the staircase documentary was great in the sense that it, they sought out to make a documentary about the US justice system and that's what they did. Um, and it just so happens that the case that they focused on was abnormal and unique and absurd and had all of these other parts to it. And ultimately so much of that humanity had to be left out of the documentary because that's not what the justice system is about, you know? And I think that part of that is how the documentary itself affected the people involved. It's how this, this tragedy affected them emotionally, not just their lives around the documentary, but those, the, the trial, but like how they grieved and how they grieved publicly, which nobody should ever have to do. Um, and so I guess what I hope people take away from our story is just an, a, a greater understanding of the humanities of the, the people involved in this case. Um, a greater empathy of those humanities. Uh, because I, yeah, I think that everybody, everybody likes to play an armchair detective, but we all kind of forget how, how much grief warps everything. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would hope. And also just kind of, you know, giving agency to Kathleen as well and giving giving a story to her because so much of so much of the the kind of tellings the other tellings of this story just pick up from when she dies and she's never actually allowed to live. Um, and we we allow her to live and we give her this this life to herself and you know which she had, which was a real life. And it's not just a statistic, it's not just a story. It's not just a victim, it's, you know, it's a real full life. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you.